Hello Wisdom and Wellness family. It's not often that you get to sit with one of the biggest names in the country. And I'm super, super excited. It actually feels like I've been chilling with a friend. We've been chatting the whole time. But he is a multi-award winning international artist, Mr. Falab, SA's Hip Hop Artist of the Decade. A son, a brother, and most recently a father. And I am sitting with none other than Casper, Mr. Casper Nyovest. Yo, Did such you... a dope intro. Is it dope? Yeah. I liked it when you said a son. I was like, yeah, yeah. that's the part I like. Yeah. Yeah, like the human side yeah. Yeah. of it, you know, not like these achievements. Because yeah. you've got a lot of the achievements. Because I was like, okay, what do I mention? What do I mention? Yeah. But I think you come across as a very, like, personal, emotional person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I relate. I've always been emotional and personal and yeah. family oriented. I know. But now I think it's it's it's, it's hitting home. Yeah, <laughs> like growing up and when you start realizing what's more important and what life is about. Yeah. Yeah. So I like that part of well, not just like it, but I value it more now than I used to. I like yeah. that. I've got yeah. icebreakers. Yeah. What did you have for breakfast today? Nothing. <laughs> oh, shucks. <laughs> I should have changed that one. I, I prepared earlier. So, yeah. okay. Now, what did you have? What was the last uh, breakfast you had? Um, oats. I like having oats. Really? Yeah. With the what? It's always my go-to oats with yogurt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's my thing. With I peanut used butter to, or, oh. or, or you, you hate peanut butter yeah. or almond butter. Yeah. No, what no, you don't like it? No fruits, strawberries. Keep it fresh. Peanut butter feels so thick for the morning. Like, I am thick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, leave it there. If you were not famous, what yeah. would you be doing this Saturday? Oh, uh, man. Wow. What would I be doing? If you knew that, no. I don't know because my whole perspective always comes from this position God has put me in. Yeah. So it's like I need to use my influence. Yeah. But something fun, like something you wish you could just do and you know you won't have to smile for a picture or think yeah. who's going to be there. You know, I still do stuff like that. Is it? Just, I, sometimes people might think I'm rude, but like when I'm out on my like normal human thing, I don't yeah. like taking pictures. I get so that. I like things like going to bounce. Okay. So you'd be a Just jumping chance. around, yeah, okay. on a trampoline or... Like go go karting, yeah. stuff like that. I like doing stuff like that. That kids, kids do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think men don't grow up. No, they don't. They, there was actually a TikTok. Yeah. I'm not sure how true it is. That says that as a man, when you play with your kids, there's a hormone. There's a good hormone that's released for real? that women don't get from playing with kids. Women only get it when their kids come for emotional support. So for me, it was such a relief because. Brendan loves playing with the kids. Like you can see, like yeah. he could go on forever. And I don't find that much joy in playing the whole day. So yeah. I think it's scientific. Yeah, that makes sense. It makes sense. Okay, yeah. last icebreaker before you go in. Yeah. Uh, what's the first thing you notice in people? Their looks. Okay, which looks? I mean, that's very shallow, but it's the I truth. had to just give you an, an honest answer. I look at answer. nails. Yeah, you look at nails. Mine are not that bad. No, they're, they're not, but they're good. But... I can see that you had them done. Oh yeah, yeah, like right. your cuticles are in place. Oh yeah, I'm trying. I'm tr I'm trying. I'm I'm trying to be this clean guy. Yeah. I don't usually. I'm like, yeah, what's up? What's up, dog? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And men, what do you notice? Looks as well. Yeah, I like. I uh, yeah, I like good-looking people. Okay. Even men, I like. I can appreciate a good-looking man. I know okay. a lot of guys are not comfortable. Yeah. With appreciating men, I think it's weird. But I'm very comfortable in my skin, so. Okay. Like, I see guys, and I'm like, yo, you're such a good-looking man. Yeah, I don't like want my girl to see that guy. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's get into our conversation. Who was the first person um, who believed in you? And I'm asking this because I think for your age, mm -hmm. for our age, to have become the person you've become, yeah. I know someone must have said, I see something in this person. <sighs> you know, I, I'll say Jesus Christ, but in human <laughs> form... Um, Yo, I always think it's one, and I'm going now deeper. I think the first person to say, yo, this kid's special was my grade two teacher, mm. Mrs. Dolly Langa. Miss mm -hmm. Dolly Langa. I, never, I, I don't think she ever got married. Miss yeah. Dolly Langa. Yeah. In grade two, she told my mom, yo, this guy is wasting his time in school. 
Yeah, it was weird because it's like second grade, right? <laughs> yeah, it's just like, what it's like are yo, you man, mean? this dude, like, he needs to be on stage. He's wasting his time. And trust me, you're wasting your time with this kid. This kid is a performer, he's an entertainer. Yeah. And I was just great too. And then um, I think I was 16 when I dropped out. Yeah. And uh, things started going well for me. And I was starting to get on TV, I yeah. think, when I was 18 really? or something. Yeah, through WHP. Ah, okay. Yeah, and then I met Miss Dolly. I remember the last time I saw her, I was like in school, yeah. primary school. Yeah, like And then I was eight, walking nine. with my mom, and I was like 18. Yeah. And she walked up to, to us and said, I told you. That is wild. Right? Yeah. Were you there when she said there's something special? Yeah, I remember. I have a great memory. So I remember sure. like her saying this. And I remember because I didn't like school. Oh, so, so I was just like, I was like, yo, mommy oh, told me you were <laughs> wasting my time. <laughs> I'm trying to, so I remember, so when pick and pay at some point, and she walked up to my mom and said, I told you this kid was special and sure. he was supposed to be on stage. So I think that's my earliest memory of someone who believed in me as an entertainer. That yeah. was actually going to be my follow-up question is that, did you, growing up, did you feel like I'm a special child mm -hmm. and i only started asking this question because i i've always believed in myself right like mm. i've never doubted myself but i didn't think other people don't think like that yeah until my husband pointed it out and he said but you're a special uh person i'm like no we all yeah. think we're gonna make it yeah but now i'm realizing that not all of us um have that mindset it's not yeah. necessary so that others aren't special but did you ever think i'm 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 different I'm you know special. what's weird i i believed in myself more when i was younger sure yeah like when i was younger i really didn't think there was failure yeah like i just i never understood why my parents used to tell me about a plan b but what yeah, if like, i'm like what, what do you mean what if it doesn't it's work gonna work it's gonna work <laughs> yeah do you get what i'm saying yeah. so because like Earlier, I thought I was going to be a soccer player, a scientist, and a musician at the same All of time. It. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I used to, and 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 I used to tell my dad, "That's what I'm going to be." And my mom used to be like, "Yeah, you could be whatever you want to be," sure. which is dope okay. because she made me believe. Yeah. So I was trying to figure out. So okay, in the morning I'd go train, be a soccer player, and then after that I go record, and then after that I just go to the lab. You know, that's how that's, my mind worked. Yeah. And then started realizing man this school thing is not the one these teachers always want to struggle talk. with school i didn't i was very smart but i hated it oh so the yeah. science part i dropped it because i could see <laughs> this cool thing is not good away <laughs> I have been, you I know sang and then the sports thing and and then the music thing stayed oh, yeah. and then the sports thing. i remember i went to my last trials i was 14 i was 13 i think under 14 and then i had such an amazing trial and all the players were like yo man you've improved so much yeah. you know i think we're gonna make it this year and they never picked me and then i just like, the dream died it. you know it's like sure. corruption you know yeah. south africa is a lot of corruption <laughs> so i that died yeah and then i stayed with the music and which is beautiful because there's no structure yeah you know what i mean yeah. it's really just you if you can yeah. get to people and people can love you and that's how um i dropped out of school then my parents didn't understand why I was trying to drop out of school, but I felt like I was late. Sure. I felt with, like with the music yeah, thing. You had yeah, to start. I felt like I needed to catch up because you know my my idol was Michael Jackson, and he uh, started at five years old. So okay, so you felt already that mm, you're behind. I was ten years late. My one of my favorite stories to tell is when I was young in primary. <laughs> um, my I wanted to be a fashion designer, but I was I. Now that you mentioned, I thought like you, like at some point I wanted to be a dermatologist and a, so, and, a mm. and a fashion designer. I also wanted and, to be and, a and, gynecologist. <laughs> no, I wanted to be a dermatologist. Oh, work with I... skin. You wanted to work with something <laughs> else. <laughs> I was, but also I wanted to be a dermatologist because I liked that I could pronounce it well for my age. Oh, yeah. So I just like saying dermatologist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then I wanted to be a fashion designer and my dad went and bought me like this book and I started designing and then he went and made had that dress made. Wow, that's so dope. Yeah, he, and, but he took me with he took me with to the material shop. I picked out the material and he took me with to Umatungane, really. Mm. You know, not really yeah, Taylor, yeah, yeah. Umatungane. And we went, had the dress made and I wore it to church. And afterwards I was done being a designer. But that moment for me 
solidified that anything I do yeah. is going to work out. And it can come to and it can come to, to, to fruition. Yeah. Which moment was that for you? Um Wow. That's a dope question. This 10 years later, I've never been asked that question like that. You're very good. <laughs> Thank you. Um Jeez, which moment was it? I don't know. Sure. I, I can think of so many moments that made me, that motivated me. Yeah. But um, um, I don't know. I'll tell a little story maybe. Yeah. This uh, this might be good. I, I remember there was a time we were all recording, like we were all rappers, all my friends, but I was the one who wanted to perform, right? Mm -hmm. And they didn't really want to perform. And I had this show, the V, the v show at my school. And I was performing a song called Happy. It was a whack song, I think. But <laughs> like when I got on stage, I did something. I don't remember what I did, but yeah. the crowd started going crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know? And yeah. I started dancing. Yeah. And I'm I'm supposed to be rapping, yeah. but I always believe like you can dance and rap. Yeah. And then I killed the show. Yeah. And then, you know, all my friends was like, yo, man, you know, you dope. You know that song, you gotta send us that song. And when I sent the song, they were like, No, but this song <laughs> this doesn't sound like the one you perform. <laughs> And then I was like, okay, I think I might have a gift wow. on stage. Wow. You know what I mean? Because yeah. my friends didn't like the song when I sent yeah. them the song. Sure. But they liked it when I was performing the song. Yeah. And then um, there's a guy called Tulamu, um, which I wanted to mention, but he came after this this teacher that I'm telling you about. Yeah. Tulamu uh, Khobokwe. They had this thing called Expressions. Mm -hmm. Um which was every month they would take kids, yeah. put them on stage, and they would perform every month and have a crowd. And that's how we kind of build our fan base. Yeah. And this is back had, home. Yeah, this is back yeah. home. And they had these auditions. Uh, I think I was 14 or something at that time. They had these auditions, and he was like, man, you, you've got something. Like, yeah. I really feel like you could uh, be a performer. He started telling me about Michael Jackson as well, which I always liked. Mm. And he was like, you could be the next Michael Jackson. I'm like, me, Michael Jackson, bro, I'm a rapper. I don't know. He's like, yeah, just believe in yourself. And he kind of just gave me this confidence and this um, structure yeah. of like how, what an artist is, uh -huh. what they do yeah. and how they improve. Yeah. And that's just how... My career started. Sure. So it's that moment when I realized I might have something special. And this moment is Tulamo. And yeah, that's how it kind of started for me that I wanted to be a performer. You actually confirmed something that I I think I knew, but I didn't know. Yeah. When when you were performing at Global Citizen, yeah. I I was basically in labor. <laughs> I was on my way to um I will never forget the day. I was on we were on our way to 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 Brendan was performing somewhere and I wasn't due until two weeks, right? Yeah. Um, but I didn't know. Um, and then you went on stage and I was in the car watching from my laptop on my yeah. way to Bad Plus and there was bad network. And I remember looking at you. I don't know how to describe it, but it was as if no one else mattered and you were this is what you've always meant to do. And it wasn't yeah. about the songs, because I don't remember the songs. Yeah, yeah. But I remember the emotion yeah. and the feeling. And so when you're telling me about how when you got on stage, everybody lost their minds, yeah. I see that from the performance I watched on the laptop because uh, I was just like, I don't know the songs because yeah. I don't listen to hip hop. Yeah. But the energy Thank of you. this person, like this is what they meant to be doing. Thank you. This you know what? Gift. Thank you so much. You know, uh, my manager always says, he always, he says, I feel so sad. He says, I, I feel for you because you'll never feel what we feel when you're on stage. Oh, T.D. Yeah. always says that to me. He's yeah. like, you know, I, every time I see you perform at Fill Up, I'm always like, I, I feel wish. for this guy because he'll never understand yeah. what happens yeah. when he's on that stage. And it makes me feel jealous, but it's like. But you know, you least, get to be in it. Yeah, I tell, you know, and here's the thing. The more you grow, the more selfless you become. Yeah. Now it's like, I wish I could feel it, but I don't wish it because sometimes when you wish, God wants you to feel it. <laughs> yeah. So it's not like that, God, I yeah. don't want anything to yeah. change. But it's like, it's so amazing to know that there's, you know, something that God um, does with me. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it, it's that important. Yeah. 
but it's like the importance of it. I don't, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not obsessed with being important anymore. You know, sure. it's like, but just to know that God uses me yeah, is a great thing. Yeah. So the global citizen, citizen night is so special. Do you know, there's not a day that goes by yeah. without anybody mentioning global citizen since that night. That makes sense. Though. It's been like three or four years. Sure. I'm telling you, every, every single, single day, day you hear about global. someone will say something about global. But citizen. do you understand that there was Beyonce yeah. and Jay Z? But I remember yeah. your performance, exactly. and it's got nothing to do with them. But I think it's speaking to the gift that you have, and I think that night you embodied everything you were meant to be. It's God, man. Yeah. It's because you know. It's so amazing that people were speaking about this night and I was going through a lot. I can imagine what was happening in your mind. The night before I was in uh, Durban. Yeah. I was doing fill up in Durban the night before and we lost 7 million rand oh. the night before. Actually the morning That's before. That's why you were performing like that. I was performing <laughs> the perform rent of you. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And then... um. Sure. The you next lost morning, seven million rand. Seven the night million, before. yeah. So the morning before is when we got confirmation that, you know, the government was pulling out. You know, the politics. In yeah, Durban. yeah. And we went. So we had to make a choice whether we were taking on the debt or canceling the show, and we took on the debt. We're like, yo, people drove here, people flew here. Got to do what we got to do. Yeah. It was the first time I saw my manager cry. Mm. He's a grown man. And he cried. I want to cry. <laughs> you know? And I was like, okay, it's time for me to do my own thing. Sure. I had to carry the team. And um, so the next day is God restoring me. Mm, that's, you yeah. know what I mean? So get on the plane. We didn't sleep. Get on the plane. We had like a little private plane. Mm. Go to Joburg. Um, just weird things happened that day. It was just such a godly presence yeah. my friend gets lost outside his name is potlako <laughs> he can't get in he says to to the security i'm here with casper imagine how many people <laughs> can say i'm here with casper dude get at the you back of the line saying? please and they say okay cool they take him from outside the stadium on a go-kart and drop him off in my change room and i'm like how did you get here he's like dog from he's from muff town he got to the stadium and he told that guy i'm here with <laughs> casper from and they believe them wow I get on stage and uh, we're doing the rehearsals and they say, uh, you performing right before Beyonce. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, Chili, you, you guys are messing around. They're like, no, Silas, you, you're really performing before Beyonce. I'm like, oh, maybe it's before Beyonce, but maybe there's like an edge uh, around. Yeah, and like, the, maybe I'm the last local act. Yeah, like Kuna you something. Know? They give us the running order. I'm like, wait, I'm really. So now I start getting nervous because I'm like, yo, this is Beyonce. <laughs> yeah. Like, as much as this is cool, yeah. when Beyonce gets on that stage, it's going to be clear that yeah. everyone was playing games. Yeah. So like, I'm nervous. And then I meet Oprah. I'm like, you know what? If anything, I'm just glad I got to take a picture of Oprah and I'm going to show it to my mom. Yeah. If anything, if, if all else fails. When I was telling my mom about Kendrick Lebar, she didn't understand. So <laughs> now she'll understand. Like, mom, I'm a big deal. Yeah, like, you know, Oprah. I met Oprah. <laughs> so... I, the day goes by and I'm just nervous. I'm nervous. And then I start realizing that everybody is performing with like a limited volume yeah. and yeah. it's like screens that are not on. I'm like, okay, is that American thing? Yeah, it's those politics we know. So, you know, th everyone has 25 minutes, I think. So I'm worried. I'm like, yo, are they going to hear me? And then Ed Sheeran goes on. Yo, with that guitar, the stadium is roaring. Everyone is singing that other song. Um, What's that? 16. Uh, which one is 16? Is it 16? Tane Ana. Yeah, you. when your feet oh, don't down and I'm in the Yes. Ah, what then, that everybody said. I'm like, what you am I going to do after sing. this? Yeah, I love that show. I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm like, yo, Joe. Anyway, let's just go. Yeah. And we had a prayer. And I have in ears on. So believe it or not, I couldn't hear the crowd Ooh. throughout no the show. Ways. For real. No. So ways. like that thing that people were feeling and seeing. So you're not feeding off no, the crowd. I'm just performing and I just remember just thinking, I hope I'm doing well. I hope I'm doing well. This is so beautiful, but I hope I'm doing well. Sure. And then Chris Martin really came on stage. He wanted to perform out uh 
Palume with me, which he promised me when he met me. Yeah. But I thought he was fooling around. Yeah. Backstory. Global Citizen was moved a day for me. No. For real. So the reason why they moved it to the Saturday was because, yeah. or was it the Sunday? It's because I was No, doing it was the Sunday. It was the, the Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Because I was doing fill up in Durban. So Chris Martin was like, yo, if you promise me you'll do the show, we'll move it a day. I'm like, for me? It's like, yeah. Is so I was like, and he's like, you know, and on top of that, I'll perform with you. Tell me something. In yeah. those moments, do you ever feel like when events are moved, when you get on stage before Beyonce, mm. when these big moments are happening, mm -hmm. do you still feel like, me? Is it supposed to be happening to me? I or used to. Now you're at a point where, if not me, then who? Yeah, I used to feel like that. I used to have like a whole... Why me? Why is this? Is it really going to happen? In fact, for me, yeah. it was like, is it really going to happen like that? But now because I'm working with God, I'm like, of course. Like, Why were you asking, is it really going to happen? Does that come from a place of disappointment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think so. I never thought I was good enough. Sure. My drive, people feel like I was always confident and I believed in myself. Yeah. But I think my drive came from not believing in myself. Ah. You know, I yeah. always thought I was not good enough. I always thought... I was lucky. Yeah. I always so I always worked harder than everyone yeah, else. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. You're probably yeah. the hardest working in the room, right? Mm -hmm. Stephen Furtick said um, he ba he's a very disciplined man, and he says mm. his disciplines are based on his weaknesses. Wow. So because he knows, like you said, because you thought I suck. Yeah. I'm the least talented in yeah. the room, or I'm not good the enough. Least like, I know I will work times ten mm -hmm. to just keep up. That's me. And I noticed it later yeah. in my life that, oh, actually I was pushing that hard as a young man because I didn't believe I was good enough. Now I'm chill. Now I'm just like, I am. Hey, come on, man. Yeah. If you don't see it, it's cool. Don't yeah, worry. It's, it's not the you. same, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's beautiful to be operating from that because now my confidence comes from the fact that I know that. It's God engineering. Yeah. It's not me. Yeah. So even if it doesn't happen, it's not because I'm not good enough. It's because mm. it wasn't supposed to happen. It wasn't supposed to happen. You know yeah. what I mean? That's not God's plan. Yeah. But God's plan is always greater. It always happens. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like now I'm starting to learn to enjoy things, mm. you know, mm. for what they are. For what they are. Instead of uh, Trying. glorifying you know, over glorifying things and over celebrating mm. and over compensating. Mm. It's always just like, that's what's supposed to happen. This yeah. is God, you know, we're talking about. So tell me yeah. about the day you left school. Yo, it was a, I was in the class. It was, I think the last day of the term. Yeah. And, um, and then my teacher, my lecturer, because I was in college, I dropped out of school and went to college, oh. like an FET college. Okay. And then she was there and I wasn't listening. I was writing songs and I felt like the front of the classroom was a stage. I was like, I'm supposed to be up there. You're out here telling us all these things. Sure. Give me my 20 minutes. That's how I always sure. felt. Yeah. And then um, I turned to one of my friends, Tabang, and I said to him, yo, man, I think I'm gonna drop out of school. And he was like, hey, when I, hey, when I can't when I was sad, you're the same thing to yeah. me. Hey, when I was sad, you can't yeah. start that. I was like, no, I'm serious. I think I think this is my last day, man. I don't think I'm ever gonna come back here. Sure. And he was like, Yeah, I know, cool. I was always that guy. And then this day comes and I was like, I'm out. And then I'm driving with my mom. We're driving to my gang. And she shouted at me about school. And I was like, yeah, you know, actually about school, I was thinking of quitting. And she was like, it's your life. Do whatever you want. And I was like, yeah, I'm yeah, quitting. I'm doing that. She's like, yeah, whatever. And I'm like, she thinks I'm joking, but I'm, I'm done. And that's how I, I quit school. And what did you do the next day? I started chasing a dream. I used to go on Facebook every day. I think about three years. Yeah. And just put up a status that says, remember Facebook status were 24 hours? No, I don't remember. You but don't... yes. Okay. No, I remember. For those who do remember. For those who remember. <laughs> Facebook statuses were 24 hours and then it'd be removed. So, so every, every 24 day. hours I would write, because it used to be your name is. Yes. So it used to be like Mpumi is. Oh, and you'd yes. Say what you're you doing. say what you're thinking. Yes. yes. So... I, it used to write, Rufilo Pulo is chasing the dream for like three years. 
every day I would write, is chasing the dream. Ophelia Polo, and then Casper Nyovest is chasing the dream. Casper Nyovest is currently in Johannesburg while we're chasing the dream. Yeah. Like three, four years. That's all you're doing. Just doing. That's how I started developing a fan base. Everybody's like, yo, man. This guy is chasing the dream. You. This guy's still, you see, he's still chasing the dream. Wow. I don't know when I stopped. I was going to ask something you, do you remember the day? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember the day I stopped writing Chasing the Dream. No, wait. I want to know the feeling when you when it hits you that you're not coming back here. What was happening inside you? Did you feel a sense of peace or did you feel a sense of relief or did you feel nervous, scared? I think relief. Yeah. You know what I'm asking? Because well, my dropout happened the exact same way as yours. For real? Yeah. So I dropped out of varsity. Yeah. And I didn't but know I that. have but I have a bursary now. Yeah, oh, that's hard. Got a bursary. <laughs> I had a job. I like my my career is set. Like it's set. It's looking beautiful. I see how it's gonna yeah. work. And but I also kept mentioning it to my friend, good friend. Like I get it, but I think I'm not happy here. Mm -hmm. And then I walked up. It was exams, and I went and I sat. And you know when you describe that you're sitting there and you're looking mm. at the teacher and you think it should be you. And mm. I'm sitting there and you're writing songs. I'm sitting there thinking of how God is supposed to be using me. Mm -hmm. And like my mind is not coming. And I'm a diligent student. Mm. But I don't see what's happening. The paper mm. went blank. Mm. And then I'm like, I think I'm done. Mm. And then I picked up my hand. And then I left the exam room and I called my mom and I said, I'm done. And my grand said, no, my brain is tired. I must just have some mm. omega-3. But that was it. You, who said that? My grandmother on the phone. Your grandmother knows about omega-3? Yeah. No, that's, my grandmother's very like... That's hard. <laughs> it's a different that's kind hard. of go -go. Our grandmother's would have probably said, what? Say no way. <laughs> He was like, no, Omega 3, Omega 3. No, my for God. Brain. Well, no, I said, no, 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 no. She's bewitched. But, but that happened when I got oh, home. There okay, was the conversation then. of, you know, but like first it was, you need to eat some eat some fish um, because your brain is tired. You don't want to quit I school. just learned about Omega 3 now. Nah, I didn't yeah. know. Yeah. None of that. That's yeah. crazy. Your, your, your grandmom is, is learned. She's amazing. She's smart. Was she a nurse? No, no, she was supposed to be a nurse, but she was a principal. But she was supposed to be a nurse. Yeah, I think she wanted yeah. to be a nurse. And then she was like, the three. smart ones. Yeah, no, but she was a, a very smart principal. Tell me about those days. Um, actually, did your big break feel like, ah, this is the day of nah. my big break? It was eight years of nothing. What's nothing? Just nothing, man. Just a little bit of this, a little bit of that, confusion, knowing that I'm the one. Yeah. But nobody sees it. Okay. For eight years, it was there. And I, I used to be like, I don't see it. Yeah. I'm the one. Yeah. I always felt like, I was like Neo in the major. I'm like, I'm the chosen one. Trust yeah. me. Yeah. And I play my music, but people don't hear you it. Don't get and it. I'm like, Joe, trust me, I'm the one. Did you get those pretty, like, listeners? You know when people listen yeah. because banter? Yeah, because I'm a nice person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, when I go with Tuto, when I go with Tuto, you know, you're going to be a star. And um, it was like eight years of that, you know, losing record deals, signing record deals, nothing happens. Um, I was at a, a, a stable called Impact Sounds. I did something wrong. I got chased out the label. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I was, I tried to sign to Sony and then I did something wrong. I got chased again. Um, WHP risked and took me under his wing with like strict rules. Say, you know what, first of all, you're a dropout. So number one, parents are going to come at me to say, this, this kid didn't finish school because of me. So you need sure. to handle that. I need to call your mom. Yo, you know, we're going to do it properly. It was wild. And yo, my big break, huh? That's okay. what I forgot. Give it to me. My mom actually <laughs> reminded me last week yeah. that I was at home mm. praying. Um, I had a liver problem because uh, I was drinking a lot. Sure. And I had a liver problem. And the doctors were telling me they couldn't do anything about my liver. It had to like heal itself. And I prayed on it and I... And then it went away. Crazy, yeah. right? Yeah. So in this period when I met... continue drinking? Yeah. In this... <laughs> of, I sell alcohol. I mean, <laughs> in this period of um, the healing, I'm home. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm i watching Benny Hinn. And, you know, there's this uh, offering piece. And they say, you know, give 
you know, make a pledge basically. Yeah. And I made a pledge. I had 400 bucks that I used to save money and I took my 400 bucks, which were like a pillow because yeah. it's all I had. Yeah. And I pledged, right? Yeah. And then within a week, WHP called my mom. And WHP was like, yo, man, this kid is crazy. But something's telling me I should take a chance on him. Mm. And he called me and he like he was strict to say, man, you know, are you serious about this? Yeah. He's not gonna get me in trouble. Yeah. I'm like, yo, man, just give me a chance. And I forgot all of this for 10 years. My mom reminded me last week to say, your big break came when you pledged. That 400 right? And then that's sure. when WHP called you. I've been telling a whole story. Sure. But leaving the most important yeah. part that out. That seed. Yeah, that seed, you know what I mean? Sure. That I planted. So that's what actually happened. That was my big break. I yeah. mean, from there, there's a lot of stories I can tell. Yeah. But that's where it all started, when yeah. I, I planted the seed. What was your first um, gig payment? How much was it? Oh, 700 bucks. How old were you? That's how I dropped out of school. Ah! <laughs> 700 yana and you just I was like, like nah, nah, nah. If I can make 700 today, 700 tomorrow, <laughs> 700 things. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. I remember calculating. <laughs> nah, when I'm, when I'm inside, 2000, 2000, 2000. I'm like, you know, because the payment was 2000, but it was the two of us. So I had oh, 700. Had and I was like, I can get this 2000 myself. So I'm asking this dude, how much did he get paid? Muli me, I think it was 4000 at yeah. that time. Jabba got 10. I was like, no, man, these people, I, I'm out. I said, no, I'm out. I'm out of the place. Yeah. So, yeah, 700 bucks changed my life. And then I spent, yeah, I think I spent about my eight years before I made money from that weekend. No. Yeah. So during that eight years, that 700 yeah, you come had on my, Yeah, there was a time, there was a day, Joe. <laughs> One of my bosses, this is the funniest Ew. thing. One of my bosses, like, Makes me count money. There's a gig that like, you'll count that money, and we count. So it's like 4,090. Yeah. So I'm like, no, 4,000. There's three of us. Tau, tau, tau. <laughs> He's like, okay, give me that 4,000. <laughs> and I'm left with 90 bucks. Like, yeah. I'll share with the team. And it's like, yo, 30 bucks, 30 bucks, 30 bucks. Like, do you remember him? Yeah, I don't want to say his name. I know, but like, I'm saying, you never yeah, forget. Yeah, I do, you I never do. Forget he calls people... me now and then, you know? <laughs> so we're cool, but it's like, yo, that thing, yo. You should give him back the And then bucks. we go and buy, <laughs> then we go buy a time. And then three days later, we're like, yo, I'll give you 90 bucks. <laughs> I'll give you 90 bucks. I'm like, oh, 90 bucks was supposed to get us bread a time, yo. I said, sure. no, it was hectic. So it was long, man. And before yeah. I started making money, it was it was really, really long. Like WHP is really the turning point of my career. Life. Yeah. If you could change anything. I know in that period, you mm. probably wanted to fast forward everything, right? Mm -hmm. Like I know you were probably imagining, but if I can just get this big break, big break, yeah, big break. Yeah. But it took eight years. Yeah. When you think about it now, if you could, would you have shortened that time or do you think no. you needed it? Perfect so perfect okay like the stuff that i learned in that eight years the patience the humility the knowledge yeah. the context the story the story you know what i mean i've got such a beautiful story yeah. and testimony yeah that i can share from love life to business music like yeah. the artist i became yeah. and the development do you know what i mean i yeah. can make any record I can make any type of music that I want to make because of the eight years. Because in that eight years, you get bored. You mess around with Kwaito, you get bored. You mess around with hip hop, get bored. You know what I mean? You listen to jazz, you don't understand it. But the thing about the ear is that once it hears something, it trains something in your brain. Sure. So like I went through so many patterns of the type of styles that I wanted to yeah. mess with. And I would never change anything. The type of conversations I had with God, yeah. the type of things that I've learned, trained my brain, conversations. Yeah. Even when I speak to people, like the type of things that I learned about conversation and communication mm. in that period, mm. I could never have, uh, I could never replace. And that's why I was different. By the time I blew up, it was like, there's something about this something guy. Something about this guy. But it's because I studied this thing for so long yeah. before... I got my break, you know what I mean? I remember that December. I think it was, um, was it 2013? 
Was it 2013 that December? No, 2014, because Brendan and I had just started dating. Oh, and yeah. I'm like a solid, I was like a solid Christian girl. And all I listen to is um, gospel music. I still am. Yeah. <laughs> I still am. But like now I listen to a bit of hip hop. Like this morning I was listening yeah. to Most Deaf. And I was all just right. like, okay. She said, I listen to hip hop. She said, Most deaf. She's, like, most deaf hip-hop? she's like, That's the best I can give you. The most conscious. <laughs> no, but I'm, of... no, but I'm like a Kanye fan, oh, all of that stuff. Cool. Anyway, um, it ha- that time, I think it was December when you were like blowing up to the yeah, point where yeah. like you became a conversation. Yeah. And I remember getting so involved and we were all picking sides. Yeah. And I was just like, This caster guy, this caster yeah, guy. And you were like yeah. a whole conversation. Yeah. Um, but that moment for you, did it feel? Do you know this period that I'm talking about? Uh-huh. You can identify yeah, with it, definitely. right? It during of that period, during that period, did you feel like, yeah, you finally see me, or was it just like, what is happening? It was like, I hope this is not temporary. Oh, okay, yeah. that was good. It was good, but I was like, yo, I hope it's not a quick, quick. Now, because remember, people don't recognize. That me, aka and Kyo, changed the game. You did. Kara like, kara. Literally. But they recognize those songs, but they don't recognize that before us, yeah. the longevity of artists was three years. Sure. That's like wild. there was always a conversation to say, what are you gonna do after music? Every interview, I'm like, what do you mean after music? <laughs> They're like, Yeah, you know, in South Africa it's three years. It's like the one album that you know people yeah. like you for the second album that people hate you for yeah. and then the third album is the fall off it was mikasa who had the same thing yeah. it was um uh was the rhythmic elements yeah. same thing ziggs van tweeting yeah. same thing all the acts that were like super big zahara yeah. and all the acts that were like super big after two albums momuli me you know yeah. everyone we they had a um there was a pattern. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I was thinking, man, like... This better last. You know, is it going to be three albums for me as well? Is it three years? What's sure. going to happen? So I was just praying and and and, and working to say, yeah. yo, man, while I have this chance, yeah, I, mean, I need to go in and build. But I always used to tell people I'm going to be the first to make money in the industry. Because sure. also, when we came in, I remember Euphonic asked me when I was 16 years old because he caught me on 5FM. Mm. They heard about me and then I came to Joburg just for this interview and he said to me, why hip hop? Mm. And I was like, what do you mean why hip hop? He's like, you know, hip hop doesn't have money. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to show you hip hop has money. I'm going to drive a Range Rover. Imagine Range Rover was like the last yeah, number like- for me. It's like, yo, I'm going to drive a Range Rover with hip hop. I'm going to show you. That time I'm just talking wild. Like I don't even know what I'm talking about. 16 year old boy. So. Sure. That, those are my thoughts at that time yeah. when this break is happening and I'm starting to make money and we're testing promoters. So we're going from 4,000 to 8,000. Then the next guy, we say, no, 10, 12. <laughs> and then the next guy, we're like, eight, 18,000. And everyone is paying. And then, <laughs> just like we, and then we used to, we went up to like 200,000. Like, it's like, Imona, just, <laughs> and it was like, Imona, they pay, you know? Yeah. And I just remember thinking, yo, I hope this is not temporary. It was scary. As much as it was good, it was scary. And at the same time, it was tough because now I couldn't hang with my friends anymore. Yeah. So I wanted to be rich and famous so I could be cool when I hang out with my friends. But I used to be called for shows while I'm hanging out with my friends. Like, yeah. there's a show right now. Yeah, and you have to and jump. I love that you mentioned that you were testing out things, with Utila, Uti 2, 8, mm. because I think it shows the beauty of the process. Because I think... People can look at that moment and think, ah, by that time he had a manager, he had mm. his rate card, mm. all of these things mm. were said. And it's like, what you just broke down for me is that you were figuring it out. We figured it out. On the go. We were freestyling. My manager uh, quit his job to be my manager. I remember he, what? he was... How did... That he responsibility? Was, bro, he was working at the campus. He's an IT specialist. So he was like, yo, I'm thinking of retiring and being a full-time manager. And I was like, yeah, obvious. <laughs> In my mind, I'm like, this guy's crazy. <laughs> Like, I'm like, I'm like, how are you going to We actually were jawing because of your salary. <laughs> we need that salary. We need that salary. But I'm like, yeah, how are you Come on. We're gonna... He says, I'm serious. I mean, I'm serious. I dropped out of school. You're going to do this thing in my mind. I'm like, this guy is crazy. crazy. Don't do that. He came yeah. with a diary even. I'm like, this guy is so serious. He came with a diary. He says, no, me and you, are you serious? We're doing this thing. He wrote, and 
bro, we figured it out. We were just guessing, tricking people. Yeah. Like figuring it out. Figuring it out, bro. Yeah. Like denying other shows when we don't have money. We're like, nah, 25. That time we don't have. Yeah. So I wanna see if this guy's gonna call back. And they would call back. And then that's how we just grew, yeah. you know. That's why me. In my opinion, my manager is like the best manager of all time. But people don't ever talk about managers. But like, I need your manager. Need, yeah, everybody <laughs> needs my we manager. We need your manager. My manager. It's your manager. <laughs> well, I'm you come from, You made him. him quit his job, Yo, so he better be your manager. He he is the greatest of all time. Like yeah. the way he played this game, you know. People give props to me, but yeah. the way that man played this game yeah. is just. Genius, him. yeah. You know, there's so many mistakes I made that he covered. Mm. So many, um, I was arrested that people never talked about. You know, I I was attacked. There was a time I made everybody in the game were mad at me. They stopped like KO and his team pulled up. They wanted to beat me up. He's the one who came out and told them, "Yo, we adults." <laughs> That boy is a young boy. <laughs> Think about we must figure it out as adults. That is that messy. time I'm tying my shoes in the <laughs> car to say, that's good. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I don't know how he like made them come down. He wow. dissolved the situation. I've seen so many things. Like that dude, when I was going through SARS problems, yeah. you know, I've I've oh, had man, so you've also been many a SARS issues. victim. Yo, a oh. serious one. They clapped me my 13 million. Like oh. they clapped me serious. So now ish, I don't want to play games with SARS. Yeah, don't play games with SARS. That's so, like the first thing. Yeah. Yeah, I try, you know, to. Yeah. So, I mean, they know everything I own now, so yeah. I can't even run away. Yeah. But like big shout out to, to T. Lee. He's a yeah. big, big part of, of this. And people don't, don't really know how important it is to have yeah. a team. Your surroundings matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, surroundings matter. What's the hardest thing you've ever had to face? Or the hardest moment? Yo, to be honest, to be very honest, um, what led to me being saved mm -hmm. was like the hardest period of, of, of my entire life. And this was maybe a few days, but it felt like, oh my God, what is happening? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I woke up one day and I looked in the mirror and I had questions I couldn't answer. You know, but mm. these questions are questions I've always had, but I couldn't answer them. But it's like my answers were not good enough and I didn't understand mm. what was going on, you know? Um, and it was three simple questions like, who are you, where do you come from, and where are you going? And you had no answer. And I didn't have an answer. And I was like, because at first I was like, I mean, I'm my parents' child, mm. so. I'm Casper. Yeah, but like the question was actually to my soul. It wasn't like to this yeah. temple this yeah. body this yeah it was like i'm like what do you mean why are you questioning where my soul comes from it's like yeah that's tough yeah you know what i mean and then i started questioning god it's like what is this like where do i come from and why don't i remember mm. like what's going on like and like my whole life became a blur like you know, I didn't enjoy anything. I didn't care about anything. Um, I remember, and I was going to Durban. I was performing there. And I remember thinking, okay, at least I'm going to see my son. Mm. So, you know, he'll yeah, make me feel something. better. Yeah. And I remember my son running towards me and I felt nothing. Mm. Nothing. And I was like, what is this? Mm. I don't have feelings towards my own son. If there's anybody... I love, it's this it's guy. This boy, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I called Buga Love and I was like, yo, man, I'm going through something, you know? Mm. Not There's nothing bad happening, yeah. but I'm not okay. Yeah. So started playing, you know, with the idea that I might be depressed and I'm like, I don't have any serious financial problems. I mean, everybody has debt, but mm. like, you know what I mean? I don't mm. have serious like, no. Materially, you're fine. Yeah. yeah. So I ended up, and I'm performing, and everyone's going crazy. But in my mind, I'm like, it doesn't matter. I'm going to die anyway. So it doesn't matter if you guys think I'm cool or not. You're all going to die too. So it's like so wild. It's very dark. Bro. <laughs> yeah, like, but I get you. What's going on with me? Yeah. And, and I would have, and I would struggle to sleep. I would sleep for an hour or two. Mm. And 
jumped back up. Mm. I started to go back to sleep. And then I went to a hospital and I came back. They diagnosed me with depression. Mm. And I'm like, all right, okay, cool. So they gave me a pill, made me feel better for a few hours. Next thing, I'm back up again. I'm like, what's going on, man? And then, but I'm like, man, that's not the answer. Then I went to therapy. Yeah. Sure. This is last year. Yeah, this is last yeah. year, like towards the end of last year, maybe yeah. from my July, August. Then. Yeah. And I went to therapy and I'm like, okay, cool. Therapy's going to make me feel better, right? And it's like, yeah, it made me feel a bit better. But then like when I'm alone, you know. Yeah. There's a void. Yeah, there's this, you know, and I'm like, man, something's wrong. And then, then I take these pills, I feel better and mm. I can physically feel myself getting better. Mm. But then I can also physically feel myself getting worse when it yeah. comes out. Yeah. Like, no, it's not it's the not answer. The yeah. It's something. So yeah. I went to church and I was like, you know what? It's how I'm feeling. Blah, blah, blah. And the answer I got was very, very boring, man. And bland. <laughs> but it's what I needed to hear. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not what I wanted to hear. Yeah. But it's what I needed to hear. Because I went there and I was like, yo, man, what is life? Yeah. What is life, yeah. actually? What is... Because, I mean, now I'm successful. I've done this thing. And God, it's like... What? Everything you could have imagined. You know what I mean? People yeah. are like, but... You know what I mean? What What is it that I figured out? Because I'm going to die. Oof. So what did I figure out that no one else did? So what did I figure out that no one else did? did everyone we're all gonna die yeah so what is this thing yeah right yeah and this guy says so i'm like what's the purpose yeah and this guy says he pulls up a scripture in the bible i think it's somewhere in genesis and he says yo we're actually created to worship god yeah yeah like that's, that's our that's soul the purpose purpose He's like, I'm not going to sugarcoat. I'm not going to give you. He's like, bro, I'm sorry to do this, but we were created to worship God. Hmm. And then someone says, says, yo, you know, God is going to use us and then he's going to bless us. And that guy's like, yeah, that's, that's all amazing. And, all. I, and I'm not saying that's not going to happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? But. but you're making it more about material. You're making it this relationship where we go to God for something. Yeah, it's like a transaction. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you're such a good child. I'm going to give you a billion dollars. Like, nah, dog. That billion dollars does not matter. We're talking about salvation. We're talking about your soul. Your soul. That you cannot buy. You your cannot essence. do this again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it hit me. And I'm like, this is what's missing. This is what I've been playing with. I've been playing with my life. And the devil had me. He had me so deep that I did not think about this at all. Mm. Everything that I did was validated and I could negotiate why I was doing it. Mm. I was addicted to sex. Mm. I was addicted to sexual immorality in general. Mm -hmm. And I had such a big ego. Mm. I thought I was better than everyone else. Mm. But I was humble in the sense that I wouldn't offend anyone. So yeah. I'm a good person. Yeah. So yeah. anything that I do is fine because I'm a good person. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But then I was like, man, like I was headed straight for hell mm. if I didn't have that wake up. So I had an encounter with God. He put me in a place where only he could save me. Yeah. I want you to, I want you to emphasize the importance of your salvation because uh -huh. you've always been a praying person. Exactly. <laughs> you've always been Christian. Exactly. You've always been a praying person. I'm sure you yeah. went to church every now and then. Exactly. But you say you were going straight to hell. Hell. Because I grew up in a Christian home, so yeah. I thought I knew God because yeah. my mom knows God because yeah. my grandfather so is a prophet. So you think that's your ticket Because it's like, yeah, it's like, I got like this, I'm on Donald's. <laughs> You know, and Donald's grandson. <laughs> yes, I'm going yeah. to. You know what I mean? It's like, and it's like, nah. Everyone has to figure out their own salvation. Yeah. Everybody's on their own. Yeah. So I had to know God for myself. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm learning. I'm in the beginning. But I had to have that encounter where God is like, do you know me? Hmm. Do you know me? 
And yeah. how much do you know me? Because you see me as this guy who blesses you. Mm. And I do bless you. Mm. And I'm going to carry on blessing you. Mm. But that is not my purpose. Mm. You know what I mean? And mm. that's not your purpose. Mm. You know what I mean? There's All more. of these things is great in perspective. Sure. You know? So I had a reset. I had an encounter with God, which was very hard because I had to die. Yeah, I died to self. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I died. I didn't even remember my life before. It was like I always think about like things like the dome and stuff for me. It's like, oh, what kind of happened? Sure. It's, I died. Yeah. And I surrendered. I went to an altar call. And I've done this seven times, by the way. I went to the altar call. But this time, I understood what I was doing. I was giving my life to God. And I was giving my soul to God. I was writing my name in the, in the heavenly book. Of life. To say, when I leave this place, remember me. Yeah. You understand? And then, it was such a hard reset because I genuinely didn't care about anything. You know when you give your life to God, you want to go to heaven the next day. <laughs> it's like, I am God, I'm going to heaven, so why do I have to be here? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> fighting with these people, they are lost, this one, you understand? Yeah. It's like, yeah, I mean, so great, these cars, come on, like, yeah. come on, I just want to go I to heaven. Go be like, you. I want to be with you. <laughs> you my God. Come on, yeah. you know what I mean? And he's like, nah, chill. Relax. I need you there. Sure. I'm going to do a thing with you. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. I needed you to go see all of that. I gave mm. you an opportunity to go. So that when you say there's nothing there, you know there's nothing there. What was your definition of success in your 20s? Mm -hmm. And what's your definition of success after that altar call? Yo, my definition of success was like being a billionaire and uh, like going on these trips with all these models <laughs> and uh, being able to like ball out of my family when I want to, yeah. uh, kind of like controlling women with money. So sure. my whole idea was like, I want to be so successful that my wife has to rely on me so much that because she can't do anything without me sure. and she has to listen to me because I'm the one with the money. Like yeah. there's this concept that I had that money sure. makes everything better. Wow. So even like relationships. Now I'm like, yo, my, my version of success is humility and obeying god if mm. i can just obey god mm. every day mm. i'm successful Ooh. i know? love that and that only it only comes by the grace of god we are not able to no. there's no way we can obey god no on in our, our own, own strength yeah you know in our yeah. own strength it's, yeah it's it's by god's grace and the holy spirit's intervention that we're able to stay away from the things that we want to do there's a video that you did that went viral yeah, yeah, yeah. where you talk about um, not every, I'm paraphrasing, not every encounter is yeah, meant to be a sexual, sexual one. Yeah. Did you feel naked putting it out? Because I think when I looked at it, I'm like, okay, this guy's literally saying, I have a sex problem. Yeah. And I can see where the sex problem has landed me. And I'm just here to tell you before you burn, like yeah, I did. Yeah. That's how I interpreted yeah, the video. Yeah. Before you burn, like I did, that it's not worth it. Yeah. You know what, though? I was not even saved there. Yeah. So God was doing a thing in already. me already. Had you made the lifestyle change? Yeah, it? it was happening. Okay. But I didn't even realize. I didn't want to be with a uh, different type of women. All the time, yeah. You know what I mean? I wanted something genuine. I was going towards having a relationship with someone and being committed to that person yeah. and not embarrassing them. But at the back of my mind, I would still cheat with Kim Kardashian. In my mind, I was like, yo, but if I met Kim, I would back. do it. Do you know what I mean? Because I mean, it's, it's, it's Kim, Kim, you know? Yeah. So I'm starting to have good relationships with women at that point yeah. and realizing that I don't have to want. That's why I'm saying not every. Mm. You understand? Mm. But I'm still leaving out the space of some of them you can smash, mm. but not, not all, all of them. them. You understand? Okay, so you still yeah. Place. So, <laughs> but it's happening in the background. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm talking about one woman. Yeah. You see this? I met this girl. Yeah. I was. I wanted to smash. I didn't smash. Later on, these things are happening yeah. in my mind, and she's the person that helps me 
figure, figure out, out the that's route. That, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, wow, imagine if I slept with her, I wouldn't be speaking to her. You know what I mean? And sure. I'm getting revelations, but God is showing me that you have destroyed yourself with sex. Oof. That's what he was showing me. And say, you've destroyed yourself. Mm. You're having difficulties with women because you see one thing. And this starts, for men, it starts at a very young age. Yeah. But we don't realize that we're addicted to sex. Yeah. We're addicted. It's, it's as bad, if not worse than cocaine. Worse, because, because it's the one sin that you, I think the Bible speaks about, that where you're actually sinning against your own body. Exactly. It's, it's in Romans where he says, and then I gave them, and then I gave them up to their own desires. Mm. Mm. That's the sin where God leaves us. So you want to do this? Go. Go and do it. It'll come back. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm like, that's why. I didn't feel any shame when I was doing it. He left me. Sure. Ooh. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I, th there was nothing wrong in yeah. my mind. You are supposed to have that voice that says, no, don't Yeah, the do Holy this. Spirit is supposed to be exactly. in you that guides you. It's that exactly. feeling. Exactly. And the more you ignore it, the more he's not, he's not harsh. Exactly. He doesn't control you. Exactly. He allows you your own will. Exactly. Whatever you practice grows and it will master you until you don't see anything wrong with it, it was my master sex was my master it used to tell me what to do where to go my days were this short because sex was telling me go there go there go there oh. go there go. and i was enjoying i had the time of my life don't you don't even you're gonna you put it out there <laughs> i was going <laughs> off i was like yo there's things that i would never tell anybody oh and I read this book that helped me. They say, tell one person. And I took one of my friends. I was like, yo, I'm about to shock you. <laughs> but you need to sit down. I need to lay it down. And he was like, please. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm like, yeah, I did it. I did it. I did it. That's not but the point. Like, that's not the point. I trust you. And I know you wouldn't tell anybody. Sure. You know, I couldn't even tell my best friend. Oh, it's man. so hectic. I used to live a life so hectic. And I thought it was fine because it was in secret. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I used to wake up 3 a.m., go to people's homes, do my thing, go home. Every time when people wake up in my home, they think I was there the whole night. Mm. I spend the night somewhere else. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was wild. That's exhausting. No wonder you were tired. Yeah. It was tough. Never mind the physical act of it, yeah. but just the emotional act exactly. of having to exactly. pretend you're something you're not. Exactly. I mean, I mean, I mean, I know people knew that I was a busy guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you're like, a celebrity. It's almost like it's normal. You're yeah, Casper. He's, he's you're in the pop. Yeah. You're, he's you're a not rapper. married. Yeah, you're a rapper. Not married, yeah. Normal. And like, bro, I created a mess. Like, I created a serious mess. I had my baby mama so much. We broke up. I've been single for two years, by the way. But, you know, we broke up because I heard her. And then I just carried on living this life. And then... You know, and she got saved, which is so beautiful. But then it became more hectic because now she's looking at me like, God, this is the father of my child. Mm. It's wild now. She's saved. I was messing up. Bro, literally, like, I was, I did not have a female friend that I would just keep as, like, a friend. A a friend. Oh. In, even in my mind, even if nothing happened. Yeah. But in Your my mind, mind it's one caught. mistake. <laughs> it's <done>. You understand? <laughs> I was bad. Yeah. I was really bad. And I didn't even realize how wrong it was. And like what you're saying, that it is exhausting. Yeah. And my soul was depleted. Yeah, so it's finished. You've given it to everyone exactly. else. Exactly. Those pieces. And I'm start, now I'm learning so much. I'm trying to help my friends. And they're like, hey, man, yes, that's hectic. <laughs> no, it's like, it's, it's dark. I'm like, man, do you know that every time you sleep with a different woman, they leave with a piece of you. Yeah. A piece of your soul. Yeah. So now imagine, maybe we've slept with a hundred women. Yeah. There's a hundred pieces of you Everywhere. in the world, right? Oof. Not everyone is a Christian. Mm. Some people are going to the Ndombeni level. Mm. They're going with your people soul. People are doing their different things. To, to yeah. the Nyangas and the Ndombeni. In the Mbaini label. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> They're going there. Yeah. 
Some people are buying snakes. Yeah. You know, there's things yeah. that people practice. They exist. Yeah, they do. They're you know real. I mean? we, we, we think that there's only one power. There's a superior power. Yeah. Which is God. Yeah. And that's Jesus. I'm yeah. not ashamed of saying yeah. that. But there's, there's other, other powers. powers. Yeah, we fight against principalities. Right here. Yeah. And they work. Yeah. You know what I mean? So those people are going there with you. I say to, to my friends, like, don't you remember a day where you woke up and you don't know why you were not fine? Mm. But nothing's wrong. Mm. But you're not okay. And then you moved. And then you... Mm. you That's what then you, Someone that you slept with is going through those things and they're going through them with, with you. With you. Soul ties. You understand? Yeah. So I had to pray. But you know, it's hard because when we have the soul tie conversation, mm -hmm. people get defensive and say, yeah, but why aren't soul ties ever... Like, why can't I get wild from soul ties? Why does it always have to be a negative thing? And it's such a hard conversation because it's like... Because not everyone that you slept with is doing well. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. People always want to take the good news from the Bible. Yeah. But they but don't want to take the, the other correction. stuff. That's yeah. why they could, we can always quote the good part. Yeah. You understand? But not the disciplines. You understand? Yeah, not the, the correction. There's a part in Deuteronomy that speaks about how blessed you'll be. Yeah. But at the end, it yeah. talks about if yeah. you do not obey. Yeah. yeah. But that's not the part we yeah. speak about. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So for me, that's what I had to learn to say, Yes, you have God's grace, but. but your lifestyle choices can get you in a very dark place, this side and that side. Hmm. It's not only the hell part, it's this side yeah. too. Yeah, you're already in hell. Exactly. Yeah. So, man, like, I, I, I am so grateful that God, I had an encounter with God. He saved my soul, and I'm so excited for the life I live now and the life that is ahead of me you know what i mean like yeah. my days are longer yeah i'm more productive yeah things Happier. can miss me yeah you know what i mean it's like all right cool they can miss me how are you gonna talk to your son about um my relationship with his, with his mom no about p being a pure man um i'm not a boy yeah um so i don't know what happens to a body's a boy's body at the age of 12 13 yeah how does that conversation look like for you now? You know, for me, I understand that because we are living in a body. Yeah. It doesn't matter what I say to him. Yeah. But God can do it, not me. Okay. So the relationship between me and my son is what I have to concentrate on that he can always come and ask me questions okay. and be honest with me. And when he's in trouble, he can call me. Mm -hmm. But the change will be from God because he has to figure it out himself. So yeah. even if I tell him what I went through, yeah. he's going to think you enjoyed your time. So, for and then, yeah. <laughs> so now me, I must enjoy. Yeah. You understand? But it's, that's, not, that's not it. Not everybody will be lucky enough to wake up before it's too late. Sure. That's the sad part. That sometimes I get so aggro with my friends and agile, and I'm just like, yo, man, like, I wish you could listen to me today because yeah. you might not have tomorrow. Yeah. You know so you mean? feel lucky. I am so lucky because let me tell you, I felt nothing wrong. Hmm. And especially because materially, you're fine. So you think that you're in you the dead think, end. Yeah. You think you don't have to fix something. Exactly. I didn't think that I was I was wrong because things were going well. Yeah, I'm and anointed. you pray. I've always known I'm anointed. Yeah, tech. and you attend us. You understand? Yeah. And I'm God's favorite. Of course. Come on, come <laughs> yeah. my life. Even though I'm doing like it is, like it yeah, is. But, but it's still, like, you understand? It's come together. And then it's like, enough. <laughs> it's enough now. Yeah. You have to. We carry an identity. If you say you're Christian, I always explain to my friends, say, it's like saying you're a motzipe. Mm. Mutsepe's child can't go out doing wild stuff yeah. because they're going to write Petrus Mutsepe's son. Ooh, yeah. You understand? Yeah. They're not going to say Jacob. Yeah, yeah. no. So when you say you're Christian, you're, cra you're carrying an identity. Mm. That is why people say, I don't go to church because, because certain priests. Yeah. They're carrying an identity. Yeah. We are responsible for this identity. 
You know what I mean? Salvation is a free gift, but you got to be responsible. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you say you're Christian, you have to live a Christian life. Not have to because something else is going to happen. Yeah. But I'm saying like, how much do we respect and appreciate God for what he's done for yeah. us? Died for us. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? But that's and a, only a personal encounter can give you that. Because I think we've all grown up in church where we're told, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not. And then you do. Exactly. And then you have an encounter. And then you realize, oh, okay. I wouldn't do this because I respect my body so much because it's the temple of mm -hmm. God and he loves me so much and mm -hmm. there's so much grace. So it no longer becomes about the rules, but it becomes about this person who loves you so much. Like you think, I always think of, I look at my children and that for me is the closest um, like metaphor for how much God loves me. Like mm. I look at them and I see my love for them, that there's absolutely nothing they can do to make make me not love them yeah. yes i will get disappointed but my right. love is so deep and then i think right. god feels like that time saying about me so i want to please this guy exactly and you know what they say they say there is no it says the rules are useless without a relationship yes right yeah so these things we are told do not do not do not do not yeah. because we don't have a relationship with god it doesn't mean anything exactly so me, by the grace of God, having a personal relationship. relationship where I talk to this guy the whole day. Yeah. yeah. The whole day. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now it's it's easier yeah. for me yeah. to sin less because we all sin. And you've got Holy Spirit in your own Exactly. Like, ah, no, and I'm yeah. sure you know, you know that feeling. Sometimes yeah. we ignore it, mm. but you ignore it knowing. Mm, the good was something that says, ah. Uh -huh. It's hard to, that's why we learn about like discerning, uh, discerning spirits. Yeah. Like now you have to learn, say, this mm. looks like, but it's not. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Mm. Because that's how the devil works. Mm. It's yes. the same process. Yeah. It's voices, just, it's same words, but just a little twist yeah. in J, you know yeah. what I mean? And you find yourself in a dark place. So having a personal relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, changed my whole perspective okay. of life. Yeah. My obedience is a gift. Mm. It's no longer a burden. A burden. It's a gift. It's a oh, gift that honor. I can only obey him through his grace. He's the one who helps me obey him. I can't do it. Yeah. Clearly I can't. <laughs> really? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I like this thing. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. And now it's like a process to say, oh, okay, that was my flesh. Yeah. That was, and it's Absolutely. natural. Yeah. It's, it's That's what happens. Yeah. It's always going to go in that direction yeah. because that's what it knows. Yeah. It's from this world. But what keeps me alive is my spirit, spirit. which is going to leave my body at one point. Yeah. And that is the voice that keeps saying, no. Mm, not yet, not now. Don't do this. What's you know this is wrong. And then it gets to a point where it's like, it doesn't say anything anymore, yeah. but it's like, yeah. Then it's like, <laughs> you see when it gets there, now you're in trouble. When it says, <laughs> okay, Dad, do, your yeah, thing. do your thing. That's where I was. Like, just do your thing. It was I'll like, and it, it was this, you know, one of my friends said, what if? You did not listen to God that day. Hmm. What is going to happen the next week? Don't hmm. think about the next year. Just Don't, the next week. Because if God had to go fetch me himself, hmm. himself to say, now. Yeah. What if, and I'm so, that's what I'm saying. I'm so grateful because I could have called the wrong friend who could have said, ah, let's just go out. Yeah. Yeah, like you're stressed, bro. You know Just I mean? have a ah, come yeah, on, chill. yeah, the grand. yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah. I called the right person. God's intervention. I called Bugalav. He said, "Relax. Don't do anything. Come see me when you're back. Sure. And we'll talk." That's what he said. I yeah. said, "Okay, cool." Okay. And he come down. He called me the next day. How are you feeling? It's like, okay, check this out. Read this slowly. You know, mm. it built up until this intervention and, and then getting saved then now i look at it it's like yo what a journey so that was the hardest part of my life remember this comes from that question yeah the hardest part, part of my life was this you know i've been able to answer three questions three yeah that i've understood for my whole life but now because they were they were sent to a different part of my mm my weakest part at the time because remember we gym mm -hmm. we eat, try and eat healthy mm -hmm. we read books mm -hmm. 
and we're feeding something that is growing so you become more intelligent healthier or stronger yeah. uh you know more knowledgeable but your spirit you don't feed mm. it's mm. malnutrition right mm. so the devil sure. attacked the weakest part of me knowing that this guy is nah, weak bula. yeah so i'm gonna ask his soul mm. who are you where do you come from and where do you where are you going now i can tell the devil that i am god's child yeah that's my identity. I'm a Christian. Hmm. I was born and I was I come from the heavenly realms. I was born into a body, mm -hmm. but my soul was paid for mm. with blood. Mm. You understand? Mm. I'm owned. I don't even own myself. Sure. I'm, I belong. I belong. You understand? Yeah. I yeah. know and understand my identity now. So now I can live the rest of my life with grace, with gratitude. Mm obedience mm -hmm. a teachable spirit because yes. i will make mistakes yeah and i'll be able to go back and apologize to those who are hurt or whatever and repent and you know life is my days are longer my life is i love more that fruitful. you keep mentioning that that my days are longer because i think we take for and it's it's the word that speaks about that that he will give he will satisfy you with long life and i think we think of it as oh living more, to a hundred no yeah. it's just your day feels satisfied like i can see the contentment mm. it's not a day of perfection mm. but it's each day has meaning each day mm. has purpose mm -hmm. what's the greatest lesson your son has taught you patience mm -hmm. yeah i think yeah patience and accountability ah, ah. yeah because and accountability part is weird because i play with him and i get tired yeah i'm tired because i'm not training i'm not Ooh. eating well so i'm like okay now I'm not enjoying my time with my son. I'm supposed to be fit and healthy so I can play and run around with him. But I can't. So I can't because I've been living this crazy life, mm. right? Now I also have to be patient with him because sometimes I don't hear what he's saying. So I have to keep asking him over and over until I figure it out. And his mom will just say, I just want Spider-Man. I'm like, man. Wait, why do you know that? <laughs> you know, so yeah, patience and accountability, but also just gratitude, man. I... I love that guy and I know that, you know, everything that I do, my decisions are going to affect him. Yeah. So uh, I have the responsibility of being an upright Christian uh, father, yeah. man, yeah. and husband to someone someday, you know. Yeah. I need to be able to, to explain to my son, say, you know, me and your mom didn't work out, but that don't mean that love don't exist. Yeah. That don't mean that you can't be... You can't find someone, you know, look at me now, I'm with someone and, you know, I need to be faithful to that person and not repeat what I did so I can at least be a good example to my son. Yeah. You know what I mean? To yeah. say we make mistakes, but we but can fix, fix them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Was fatherhood scary to you? I know a lot of men go into a bit of a frenzy shock when mm. they become fathers for the first time. I don't know if it comes with the responsibility of It wasn't what? scary for me because it was planned. Okay. Right? Yeah. yeah. I didn't, yeah, I was not one night stand. Or, <laughs> I didn't say or, it. <laughs> it wasn't that. Oh, it was just like this is the gift. I have wanted. something to tell you. What? What's happening? Yeah. I missed my period. You did what? Yeah. <laughs> you did what? Yeah. So it wasn't like that. Okay. It was like, um, yo, I think we're ready to have a child. Me too. Mm -hmm. And you know, but also which brings me to like. Obeying God, because he said sex before marriage is a sin. Mm -hmm. I didn't listen. Mm -hmm. And now we have this complex situation yeah. where, you know, we have to raise a child in two different homes. Yeah. You know, and now I see the effects yeah. of it because as much as we're both saved now, yeah. we have at least a way to communicate and a, a God to answer to, but we're human beings. Mm. So we fight. Yeah. It's complex. Lot, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, I get it. Like, you know what I mean? Now we're creating broken homes, yeah. not only about the pleasure. And the, there's so many there's dynamics so many, to like, God's laws. I think we think God is trying to punish us, but it's not punishing us. He's just simply saying, I see, I see further than you can possibly see. Exactly. What's the season of, his of your life called? The season of this life. Oh, the redemption. season of your life called redemption. redemption. I don't know why that word came to me. What does it mean? Um, in my understanding, you have been redeemed. You have been brought back. To life, right? Yeah. Yeah. You've been brought back. 
Jesus Christ died at 33. Yeah. My old self died at 33. Yeah. Crazy, right? Crazy. It happened on sure. this year. And yeah. then I learned about Jesus and I'm still learning. It's the beginning. Yeah. But it's such a beautiful experience. The most important decision of my life. Please don't stop sharing it. I'm never ever going to stop. And I had to come share it here first. Yeah. Such a beautiful podcast. I love you and Brandon. Yeah. And you guys are so inspiring. Um, and I love you more now because I'm saved. Yeah. So I see it <laughs> clearer. Yeah. I admire what you have. And I want to get married also one day soon. Yeah. Soon. Because also I, I'm not having sex now. So I know that. Oh, you're abstaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ever since I got saved. Are you saved. fan of it? Yeah. And I'm not celibate, but okay. I'm not having sex. What does that mean? I mean, like I'm, I'm, I'm seeing someone. Okay. But, yeah, okay, but you're just not having sex. Okay, yeah, celibate gotcha. means that you're not seeing anybody. No, does it? Yeah. Unless I got it wrong. No, no, celibate means you're not having sex. So you are celibate. It's, it's just sex. Sex, just sex, yeah. Oh, I, then so I you have just, something to... So you just jolla. Bye-bye. Yeah. Love you. Ah, the kiss is there. Come on. What do <laughs> That's you mean? Fine. Yeah, yeah but fine. yeah, I don't... So, and I I'm never pro- thought I would see a day where I'd be saved. Sure. And, and, and... um um, saved from my addiction and cured from my addiction of yeah. sex. Is it a work um, in progress? Is it a daily decision? It was like that. Okay. The sex part of it? Yeah. But, yeah, I mean. But what I mean by that is that every day you have to make wake up and make a decision that this is who I am now. You know why? I, I don't, because that's what I'm saying. It's God's grace and the Holy Spirit's intervention. I do not struggle with wanting to do the act. Okay. Those, those. But your, but I understand your personality. Yeah. Your personality, you're an extremist. When you say you're gonna do something, you do it. And yeah. You go for it. There's people who have personalities where they have to ease, ease, ease. But you're the type of guy who says I'm gonna do it, and then you do it. But the thing is, if I love something, I'm gonna do it either, regardless. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm not the guy who's gonna quit sex. Yeah. I know that I was able to quit having sex because of, of the Holy Spirit and God's grace. That's the only reason. Okay. Because I still want to do it. Yeah. I think about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've got a girlfriend. Yeah. So we spend a lot of time together and I have those thoughts. The other thing, I have the thoughts of my old life because yeah. it's stuck in your memory. Yeah. But there's a voice that says... Yeah, you have to continue to renew your mind. I don't even fight it. It's not even like, ah, yeah. can't do this it's like, okay, I surrender. So, yeah, man, that's what I'd like to, to close with, just to say to people, I hope I'm an inspiration to someone. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, not because of me, yeah. but because, you know, just to... If someone is out there, you know, having questions about God, about Jesus... He's still alive. Mm -hmm. You know, he's still the same. Mm -hmm. And he's done something very small to me, Mm -hmm. but it's very big to me. Mm -hmm. But and imagine what he could do to your life. You know what I mean? And um, I'm very excited to be in this place. People should, you know, be a bit uh, graceful with me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I am going to make mistakes. 100%. But, um, you know, all I'm trying to do right now is see God's face and his favor. And live the rest of my life the way I'm supposed to. I love that. Yeah. I want to ask you one last thing. I have got this wall of wisdom, but it's fine. What's a quote or a verse that you live by that you say to yourself every single day? Um, there's a lot. Every day. You know what? To be honest, the most helpful word of my day today is God saying, do not fear. Mm-hmm. yeah it gives Enough. me rest yeah you know because it's something i actually got a quote of it says the bible says do not fear 365 days yeah, and then yesterday th- i realized that it's actually a lie oh that's i'm sad. sorry i'm oh, so, I sorry. so excited you know what i mean and <laughs> i'm, I'm so like excited. come on i hated oh, that man. i read that i've told so <laughs> many people about it, it. <laughs> and it's like it's not 365 days but i mean 365 times but the importance of God saying do not be afraid yeah. is there because it does get overwhelming. It does. It does get scary. Yeah. And when you're naked and you're starting this walk, mm-hmm. it gets even scarier because yeah. you understand how big the price is. Yeah. Sure. And how big the gamble is. Yeah. And it's eternity. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But we're not supposed to be 
afraid. So yeah. I hold on to that a lot and it helps me, yeah. you know, not to be afraid yeah. uh, because, you know, I made the right choice. And um, yeah, that's what, that's what I live by every day. Do not be Do afraid. Not fear. Do not fear. You know, and there's this series just in closing. It's called The Chosen. Oh, Brendan's told me about it so many times. You haven't watched it? No, it'll I don't. I don't like your watching mind. stuff, but I'm gonna watch it for you. No, it'll blow. You're gonna fight with him because that's all you're gonna watch. Okay, I'll and watch it. Being a Christian, where you are, especially now that you have knowledge, you know, like seeing God in human form. Yeah, it's my help me so much. The reason why I'm talking about this is because I'm talking about do not fear. There's a part in this series where Jesus goes. You know, he would go away to pray in the yeah. in the forest and yeah. come back. And he had this revelation that he had to die for us. Mm. Right? Yeah. And seeing, seeing watching God it actually. Yeah. In human form made yeah. me realize that because he was in human form, he felt what we felt. Everything he felt. It. You understand? Yeah. So the fear that we feel he knows it. Of hell and and making mistakes and the condemnation. He felt it. Yeah. So he knows sure. it. But he was still able to obey and go and die on the cross. Sure. We don't have to die physically yeah. on the cross. But we have to just... But we have to, you know, yeah. die in yeah. the flesh. Submit the flesh. And obey. So even though we're not supposed to be afraid, we're going to feel the fear. So it yeah. helped me. So that's why I'm speaking about do not be afraid. Okay. I feel the fear. Yeah. It comes, it visits. But I have a reminder to say that I serve a living God mm -hmm. and his promises are eternal. Thank you so much for Thank trusting you. me with this. This was so nice. Right? Like at some point you're just like, bro, I'm like, yeah, I'm one of the guys now. <laughs> you do, you, yeah, I, yeah. Tr I trust you. I trust you. I think I came to the perfect platform. Yeah. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you. Um, with the opportunity to share a little bit of my story. I will be sharing more. Yeah. Uh, I thought Instagram reels were not enough time, mm -hmm. so... That's why I wanted to be here, which yeah. looks like an Instagram reel. Does it? Yeah, well, it's like it's mad pretty. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's a wrap. Thank you so much, Wisdom and Wellness Family. Just so you more in. Girl Pal, excitement is building as we gear up for our annual Unlimited Fest. If you missed out last year, don't make the same mistake again. So join us for two unforgettable days packed with inspiring speakers, incredible musicians, DJs, food, and a time and a half. This year is all about healing. Secure your spot now at www.unlimitedfest.co.za. Don't miss the experience of a lifetime. Unlimited Fest, where we heal, celebrate, and grow. See you there.